Hey, it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm, and you know it's pumpkin spice season. So of course we're gonna make ghosts today. A ghost. I'm gonna do a cross between the pumpkin head guy and the boo guy. So something a little bit different. I like to have different ones. Um, and during this video, I want you to tell me what your favorite thing about fall is. Is it Halloween? Is it chocolate? It's always chocolate for me. Um, or is it just autumn? Or is it pumpkin spice? Okay, so let's make some ghosts. Okay, so today we're going to be making a fast little ghost ornament or for your tiered tray. You know, I like, I have a tiered tray in my kitchen and I always decorate for the holidays. So I'm going to do a combo ghost. He's going to have this hat and he's going to have this boo because a lot of you, I posted this guy and a lot of you wanted to know how I made the boo. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. And you know, there's other, this is the witch version. So we're going to use a few things. We're going to, you're going to need your core wool. Okay, you'll need core wool. And then you're going to need white if you want your ghost white. And then you'll need some black for the details. And then for, uh, for the pumpkin hat, just refer to our last video and make a tiny guy. This is a tiny little pumpkin. He's about an inch and a half. And he's going to be the hat. He can even be smaller. For the boo, you need three millimeter felt. This is really wide. You can see this is wool felt. It's thick and it comes pretty fat. And then I freeform cut these, but I know, you know, um, and this one, I already have this one covered. Um, you can use stencils or print it out on your computer, cut it out and trace it. Um, I just freeform them and I'm going to show you how I do that. So you need that, a little bit, a little piece of twine to, to hang it on. You're gonna need some locks. We're gonna put the locks around the base of the ghost. And let's get started. Okay, so first um, we need some core wool. This is a really easy project, you guys. Um, you're just gonna take it and you're gonna roll up tight. Roll, 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 roll. Roll a nice, tight hot dog. It's the best way I can say to start it. And let's stab it to secure it. So you can see that's not big enough yet. But we're making, we're making a dome shape here. One end is going to be flat. So remember that. And then one end will be curved. So I need a little bit more. And really the sky's the limit on how big you make these. And I will give you measurements as soon as I get him into his shape. So I want it flat. I don't want it round. So we're kind of getting there. And we're just gonna curve this. I'm using a 38 star needle today. It's a just a nice firm felting needle to get us to where we need to be. I do like the spiral needles, you know that. But this is just a plain 38 star. All purpose medium felting needle. Why? Because it's what I had in my hand. Uh, <laughs> to tell you the truth. So I want the base just to be a little bit wider. So I'm adding another piece. And then I have what I'm going to do when I decide it's about the right size. So let's see. Let me see here. I'll get my ruler out and give you guys some measurements. So it's four inches tall. It'll end up being about three inches wide by one and a half. And I want to get, I'm going to just sit here and felt this a nice curve in his head. And once I get there, then we're going to cover it in white. So I will show you that in just a minute. Okay, so I've been working on this guy for about 10 minutes. Remember, I felt fast. I'm a super fast felter. Drives everybody crazy. Um, I made sure that his body's nice. His bottom is nice and flat because I want him to sit up. 
and then I've just been felting along. You can see he's still squishy, still squishy, but in the shape that I need of a ghost. Doesn't need to be hard. Don't waste, don't waste your energy felting things really hard. All right, so now I'm gonna take this white. This is called Snow. And it's the best white there ever is. Felt like a dream. You probably don't want to know the chemical process they used to get at this white, but it's awesome color for a ghost. And I'm just kind of drafting it out, wrapping it around. They have made these ghosts sparkly, some of them. This one is sparkly. See that? That takes longer to felt in. So we're just gonna stab this on and my white just fell on the floor. Someday you guys are gonna have to meet the man behind the camera. <laughs> Strap a little more. This is a really fast little project. It's a fun one. And Halloween is coming. It's pumpkin spice season. Granted, not until September 22nd. My house Halloween is happening. I'm working on a funky bat right now that we might have to do for next week. It's kind of big. It's kind of funny. You know, our ghosts have to have arms because, you know, they want to hold stuff. So we're going to make some arms here. And just like that, he's all covered in white. So let's make some arms. You're going to take, a, you only want his arms to be, depending on what he's going to hold. These guys are going to be about two inches. So just like we made the body, we're going to take our core wool. Look, this has seeds in it somebody's farm and I tuck it in I'm gonna roll it into a tiny little hot dog you can use a skewer if it's easier for you I'm just showing you the tuck and roll method today you need two unless you're making a one-armed ghost My goodness, it is hot today outside. I was working in the garden earlier with a friend of mine. She came over and said, we're going to go do this garden. I said, only if we quit at 10. Oh my gosh, by 1030 we were dying. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't finish. We got a lot done, but we didn't finish what we were doing. And then my husband came home with four yards of garden soil that now has to be wheelbarrowed to said garden. I hope it cools off. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make him use the tractor. It'll be easier. Okay, so that does not look like a ghost hand right there. Like I said, these are about an inch and a half long. We're gonna cover them in white, just like we did the body. But at the bottom of his arm, I'm gonna leave some fringe.
for any of you people who are in Southern Oregon and you're watching this, so today, what's today's date? I don't even know. Okay, August 26th, which is a week from Saturday, is our open farm event. So if you're in Southern Oregon or Northern California or just want to come, you should come on out. We're going to be teaching a lot of different stuff. We have dyeing. We have felted soaps. We have weaving. We have carding. We have all kinds of things. And it's kind of the debut of the new event barn. And of course, my kids, my grandkids are going to be selling lemonade. So come visit us 10 to 4 Saturday. It will be fun. Okay, so now I have my fat little arms done. How fat you make these, how skinny you make these, it's totally up to you. If you want a skinny armed ghost, I like them kind of chunky. Now we're gonna attach them. So kind of decide how big your letters are gonna be. This is important. So we know that his O is there. So this arm needs to be about right there. And we're just gonna add it to his body. And then this arm will go on this side. These guys with the words, I like the arms to stick straight out. And then you can take a little tiny piece. This is like icing. You're gonna use it like wool glue. Just work it in. Attach it to there, attach it there. We're just gonna hide the seam of his arm. And it felt, felt, felt. And then we'll add another piece. Try and make sure you overlap your white when you wrap it. Otherwise, he'll come out looking kind of like a ghost mummy. You'll be able to see part of the core wool underneath. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to felt this white on super hard. Well, not super hard, but super smooth. I like him to be super smooth. Okay, so I've been working on this guy 10 minutes, you know, me and my 10 minutes, and I got his arms all smoothed in. And now I decide, I decided I think I like this side for the front. So I'm kind of going to draw his eyeballs on where I want them first. You can make them any size, any shape you want. Ghosts, you know, are irregular. Don't go below his arms. You know, you want his head up here. So I have that, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of black, poke it. You can roll it into a ball. I just kinda gather it with my needle. You know, I said this was an easy project. I didn't say it was gonna be snap your fingers quick. And then we're gonna put his other eye on. You know how I am? I don't like any 
black interfering with my white. And then let's get it in my mouth. I kind of make them kind of oval, not square. Wonder who decided ghosts are supposed to look like this. I'm gonna have to Google it. Okay, so now he basically has a face. And then there's a couple different ways you can finish the bottom of him. If you don't have the color locks like I have here, you can always just take black and go around the bottom. But I really like the way the locks look. So I just take them and attach them. All the way around kind of random I'm gonna do random colors today they're kind of Halloween colors autumn colors not necessarily Halloween got some orange ones little blue face locks they make the best decor I'm just gonna tack them like here's a green one just gonna tack them for right this second. I'm not really even paying attention to what end goes up. I am splitting them a little bit though. If you have extra and they can wrap around the bottom, that won't hurt anything. Kind of makes him look like he's in the fire, like everybody says. Made that one way fuzzy. This is where your artistic license comes in. Do whatever color you want. You could even use different color rovings. It doesn't have to be black. I really like this gold color. A random orange one. I'm still not gonna tack them on all the way yet. I'm just gonna leave them like that for right now. Cause sometimes I like them not tacked down all the way. Now I'm gonna, okay, I don't like his mouth. Now that I look back at him, sometimes I have to take pictures of things and look at them and see if I like them. I want his mouth skinnier at the top. Okay, so we have our scary guy. So now I'm gonna show you, let me move this, how to make these letters. So he's gonna hold the sign that says boo. And I've got two more letters here that are cut out of that three millimeter felt. I'm gonna take some black roving and I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate a piece out and then I'm gonna divide it in half. These are probably 12 inch pieces. 
And all I'm doing for these letters, and I'm going to do the B, because it's the harder one, is I'm wrapping them. Sometimes it's better to use a shorter piece at first. I'm just wrapping my felt. This is a great big cheat using the felt. If you want to freeform your letters, have at it. This is way faster. And then give it a little bit of stabs. Just to secure it. And we're going to sit here and we're going to wrap all the way around. When you get to the middle of the, like if it's a letter like a B that has this middle, so let's secure that. That's extra. We're going to wrap a piece just around the middle. And get rid of this extra. Because these are wool felt, and because they're not black, the last time I did it, I used black ones. This time I had just three random pieces of felt, so I cut them out of different colors. Got to be careful because the color of the letter will show through the black because it's wool. So let's do the center. And I'm just going to keep wrapping these letters until I have them wrapped all the way around and I'm going to felt them. Okay, so I'm sitting here felting my little letters. This O has a little bit of the color showing through, but it won't hurt anything. Okay. So if you want, you can take scissors and trim all the little fuzzies off of your letters to make them super sharp looking. You know, I like to trim them, but I want to show you how to put them onto the twine. So this is the back. So obviously we're spelling it backwards. So B-O-O. -O. Which side do I like better? I like that side better. So that's the front. You're going to put it under your twine. You know, I usually have you take a needle, but we don't need to do that. We're just going to add some black it over the twine. You want to be up pretty close to the top so it'll stay nice and straight. And then we'll do a little bit more on the B. You want to felt it in pretty good because they are holding that. So what we have is we have the word boo. If you wanted to make just felted letters on a large scale you could. It is the fast way to make felted letters. So we're gonna take the guy. And I, I wrap that around and just like I did the letters, I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Just think of it as wool glue. Felt it down on his arm. Same thing on this side. I mean, if you want to tie a knot, you can, but you don't need to. Now he has, <laughs> he's saying boo. So now we're gonna attach his pumpkin hat decide which way you want his pumpkin to go. And then we're just going, since the pumpkin's made out of wool, 
and I'm going to attach it where the ribs are because that will help indent it some more. I mean, if you want to be faster than this, you could use a little drop of hot glue under there. I like to be a purist and felt things together when I can. And there you have it. One scary boo ghost. Oh, this guy is happy. This guy is scary. It's kind of fun. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, where we meet our little ghost. And I want you to post your finished product on the Lion Gate Farm Facebook page or on the group page. Either one works. And then make sure you click like on the video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And we'll see you next week. And make sure you answer our question that we asked earlier.